Warm welcome to the Snowflake SQL video series and my channel Data Engineering Simplified. In this episode 6, we will continue our discussion around context function and we will discuss one of the important session context function called last query ID. How this function can be used for different purpose and especially with the result scan table function to save your warehouse cost. We all know the context functions are very powerful in Snowflake but not used as frequently as expected. We have already covered 21 context function in our previous 5 episodes. Refer the card above in the playlist link. So this is a complete list of context function. 8 from general, 10 from session context and 8 from session object context. In this episode, we will primarily focus on the last query ID which is a session context function. Where can I find the SQL script used in this episode 6? You can go to my website and see all the script used in this episode. The link is given below in the description section. Where can I find the Snowflake documentation? The Snowflake documentation can be accessed through docs.snowflake.com and you can find the reference for all the SQL functions. Let's understand the definition of last query ID as per Snowflake. So the syntax of last query ID says last underscore query underscore ID. It does not support the ANSI syntax. So you have to use this function along with bracket. Its definition says it returns the ID of a specified query in the current session. We have seen how the current session really works. If no query is specified, the most recent execute query is written. So how the argument looks like? The argument is optional. So you can specify a number which could be a positive or a negative number and this is an optional thing and if you do not specify by default it takes minus one which means query id would be written if no parameters passed when this context function is invoked. So let's jump into the live demo and we will use snowflake free trial edition to exercise the SQL script. Here I'm accessing the snowflake legacy web UI and I have my worksheet open. So let's run the last query ID with select statement. As we know, all the context functions are function and it has to be used through the select statement. Here I select the SQL statement. Here you got the result. So the result is not a numeric, it's a string value. ANSI is not supported and if I do not specify a bracket, it ends with an error. So let me select this SQL statement and here you see my SQL statement ended with an error. It does not need a warehouse. Here you can see my warehouse is not running. Uh, and uh, if I select this SQL statement and run it. So here I got my compute warehouse, which is right now not running. If I run this context function, let's see what happens. It does not start the warehouse. It means that this context function does not need any warehouse. Perfectly fine. So we may have a question that if a query has failed, does it get a query ID? Yes, whether it is a failed query or a successful query, all the query gets the query ID. And let me try that. I am running this SQL statement and this SQL statement will fail. We have covered the last transaction in the episode 5. So I have selected this SQL statement and this query has failed because last query ID does not support the ANSI. Since this query has failed, I can check it. The query ID is still generated. And if I run this statement, I should get the same query ID which ends with 9 to 1. Let me try that. And you see here we got the result ending with 9 to 1. So this looks good. Just to make sure that this does not return a numeric value, I am performing a plus operator through this SQL. Uh, let's see what result does it give. So it took some time and it says that this is not a numeric value and it is not recognized. So this is how we end it with an error. What kind of function the last query ID is? Is it a scalar function or a tabular function? So we can run show functions like last query here you can see I got the result with my filter criteria it says the name of the function is last query id it is a built-in function and if I further scroll it says it is not a table function so it is a scalar function let's see if I assign the result of a last query id to a variable does it work so here I got this statement executed this statement generate a query id ending with 931 however the result of this last query id is referring to this statement so don't assume that the value of this will end with 931 so here i got 895 
and if i would like to understand what is at 895 i can go to my i can copy this query id i can go to query history and here i can say query id post the copy the query id and it gives me a result this is state this is how i can use a query id and use it in a query history tab let's go back to the worksheet again we have seen the last query id takes an integer value as an optional argument and if i give a minus one what does it mean that it will give me the query id of the last executed query which is as good as not passing any parameter both this function will give me the same value let me run that so here this is the result both of them are ending with 935 so if you do not specify a value or if you specify minus one both are same if i give a positive number this is the first query in this session and when i say in this session i can run uh, what is my current session and here is the result current session is ending with 781 and when i say it is a first query in this session so if i specify one it will give me the first query in this session so if i say second it is a second query in this session and if i say minus one uh, by default it is a minus one value it will give you the last executed query if i say minus two it will give you the last second query in the session so let me open a new window and show you how this one to minus one works Here. I am in my new worksheet and I have specifically given first query, second query, third query, fourth query. I have not yet executed any query so far. Uh, this is my first query. I have selected this and I executed. My query got executed. I will copy the query ID and keep it here. Next, I am setting the database. Again, I am copying the query ID. I am setting the schema. And as I do this context function, we have seen how to set the context uh, this part will change automatically this is my query id now i am setting the compute warehouse as a warehouse here i have just given another complex sql this is my fifth query this query will fail current rule does not support the ANSI standard. I wanted to show you even the failed query gets a query ID. So it complains that current rule is not the valid identifier. However, it generates a query ID. Now, if I use the last query ID function, I am expecting this query ID as a result. So let me try this one. Here we see this eight, e9 8e9 so the query on the line number 12 is giving the query id which is from the line number 10 perfect if i try to run this statement select last query by giving a uh, argument value 1 or value 2 it should bring this to query id and let me try that here is a result 6971 6971 perfectly fine let me run another statement and I am running with the value 2 which is the second statement in the session ending with 8cd and it is ending with 8cd. If you run all those query let me copy paste in another worksheet. So sometimes we may assume that if I run all the query together will it generate a one query id or a multiple query id. Let me try that. So the moment I check this checkbox this button says that I have total nine queries. Let me click and it executed all the queries and this particular query failed. And how can I check whether each of these queries, even though I executed together, it has got multiple query ID or a single query ID. I can open this tab and I can see that one, each of them has got its own query ID. As we know, the query history holds the data only for a 14 days. So where you can find the query history detail. So for that, you have to use the role account admin and you can go to the Snowflake database, account usage schema, and you can go to the query history table. The query history table holds the query ID. And here you see each query executed in the system is recorded and you can access them through this view. One important thing I have observed and I would like to share that observation with you. If I run this query where I am splitting the query ID with hiking, let's see what result does it bring. I have created a multiple session and the session ID is recorded here. The first part of the query ID looks exactly same. We can also use last query ID with other table function. For example, result scan. 
the result scan is a table function which converts the result of the previously executed query into a tabular format and let me explain you i have already covered result scan in a different video but here i would like to show you how i can use the last query id let me give you a simple example show function sql construct does not give you a table result it just give you a result i ran this statement and i got all the functions available in this snowflake now this is a query id which is generated i want to convert this result into a table what can i do i can use last query id as an input parameter and pass it to the result scan and i can use a keyword called table so this result will be converted into a table here i can apply a where clause so let me first run this now you can see my re my result is still looking same but this result is coming as a table format how does it help me so for example i can write me equals to percentage before i run this query i have to again run the show function now this query id is generated now i can use the result scan with where clause and the where clause will give me a very specific result so this is how you can use the last query id with many other functions to generate a necessary and appropriate result so i hope you have enjoyed this demo and trivia time let's see how much you have learned in this episode answer of all those questions you can visit to my website and the link is given below in the description section thank you for watching for those of you who are visiting my channel first time i request you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and press the bell icon to get the notifications if this content is meaningful and helping you in your day to day work press the like button and also share your feedback via comment section and yes before you go if you are benefiting from any of my content i would love to hear about your success story Please share your success story through the Google form given in the description section.